Oh, let's all learn together this morning. Let's all come along together and learn us some stuff. What is R32? This is Daiken, or as it's pronounced, Daiken, I believe is the actual pronunciation of this. It's Daiken Global. Daiken Global, and we're going to read about R32 Next Generation Refrigerant, which has been around for a long time because it's actually part of 410A. Half of 410A is R32, and the other half is 125. And you may say, Zach, why is there an other half to R410A? Why don't they just use the R32? Well, that's because R32 is mildly flammable. And they didn't want to have mildly flammable refrigerant out there. And I guess they changed their mind. And now you techs out there are going to be text kebabs whenever the R32 ignites and explodes. That's a, that's a, little, that's a little dramatic. It's mildly flammable. It's not like, like you're using the French refrigerant, propagne. So, let's see. R32 is a next generation of refrigerant. Okay, so what? Okay, great. Refrigerant is a medium for conveying heat. So, they're really starting with the basic stuff here. Air conditioners transfer heat while circulating. Okay, we know this stuff. All right. So, let's just look at this nice picture they have here. It says, 100-year global warming potential of different refrigerants. So, we start with, like, the worst on the right. It's like R23, which I don't even remember R23. Maybe you guys know R23. And uh, down there in the chat, post top streetlight. Yes, it's a it's a class A2L refrigerant. They created like this middle tier class. There's A2, A3, A1, and A2L, which is like the mildly, ref you know, mildly flammable. So they created this other class. So I guess they didn't have to put R32 into the flammable category. Makes it seem better, I guess. I don't know. They created the class. We can we can ask Objute about that. My buddy Jason Objute works a lot on this subject. So let's look. We have R12 in this picture, which has, I guess these are GWPs. The, the GWP for R12 is over 10,000, which is a lot. And I've also noticed something else, guys. Whenever you research GWPs, they change. It's like they're different from website to website, which makes me a little concerned that it's not a legitimate thing. Not that it's not true what it does, just not that it's not accurate. It's maybe less accurate than we would like. So let's go on down the list here. We have R32. It's going to be great. We're going to get to it in a second. R12, over 10,000. R11, again, old refrigerants that are just destroying the earth. 4,700. R410A, over 10,000. This is the part that always blew my mind. R410A has a higher GWP than R22. You know, the refrigerant it replaced. And guys may be like, hey, man. Why, why did they do that? It's because R22 has a slight ozone depleting potential and R14A does not. So while GWP is important, it's not as important as that big honking hole in the ozone that R22 makes. So let's go on down. R22 is 1810 and now way down there, that tiny little circle in the picture is R32, 675. 675, man, that's not too bad. That's pretty small. That's going to take forever to totally annihilate the earth. We'll have to wait longer. It'll be a few more generations before the earth is, you know, an incendiary device. And we go all the way down to CO2, which is one. And guys out there might be like, why don't we use more CO2? We should use CO2. Well, CO2 runs at some insane pressures. I know that much. And not only that, the CO2 also doesn't want to go through the refrigeration cycle without some help sometimes. When you get a little bit warm outside, CO2 doesn't want to uh, do like other refrigerants. Uh, I believe they call it transcritical. I don't have a lot of experience with this, but it's almost like you need a secondary refrigerant system to help cool the CO2 to condense. I believe that is correct.